Welcome to my classroom. I am Nestle. In this video, I will try to explain the properties of the action potentials. So, we know that all cells in our body have an electrical potential difference between the two sides of the cell membrane, and this is called the resting membrane potential. Some cells, on the other hand, are able to change this resting membrane potential to produce two new types of membrane potentials, which are local and action potentials. For all these three types of membrane potentials to take place, the ions have to move from one side of the cell membrane to the other side. So, for the ions to move through the cell membrane, we have two requirements. One is a driving force to push them through the membrane, and two is ion channels through which ions can pass, because ions are not able to pass directly through the lipid membrane. If we concentrate on the driving force, it can be of two types. One is electrical and the other one is the chemical force. What about ion channels? Ion channels can be of two types. The first group is the ion channels that are always open. These channels are also called the leak channels. The second group of ion channels are ion channels that are not always open but, and they are called the gated channels. Gated channels require some conditions to open up and let the ions to pass. So there are basically three types of conditions that can open the gated channels. One is um, is a mechanical effect, like something like stretch may open these channels which are also called mechanically gated ion channels. So the second condition that can open a gated channel is the binding of a chemical substance which is also called a ligand and these channels are called ligand gated channels therefore. The third and the last group of gated channels are voltage-gated ion channels. These channels open only if the membrane potential changes and then they will let the ions pass through. So only an ion channel that is open can let the ions pass through and then if a channel is open, ions will move through the channel by passive diffusion under the effect of these two different driving forces. So let us examine how opening and closing of the channels work together with the two driving forces to produce different types of membrane potentials in this figure. Here is a nerve cell with a resting membrane potential with, of minus 70 millivolts. When the nerve potential of potassium in a cell like this is minus 80 and the nerve potential of sodium is plus 61, we know that, we have already learned this in the resting membrane potential video, we know that there are in this cell membrane there is a lot of leak channels for potassium and very few leak channels for the sodium ion. Let us examine the driving forces for each of these ions in the cell. So, the first force is the electrical potential and the electrical potential being negative on the inside is going to pull both of these positive ions into the cell. What about for potassium? For potassium, 
the chemical force, which is the force of the concentration gradient, is going to push potassium out of the cell. But what about the amplitudes of these forces? The electrical force is about 70 millivolts, whereas the chemical force for potassium is approximately 80 millivolts. As a result, we see that there is a net driving force for potassium, which is only a small force, and that is 10 millivolts. What about for sodium? For sodium, the concentration difference is from outside to inside, and the chemical force is going to push sodium into the cell. What are the amplitudes of these forces? The electrical force is 70 in amplitude and the chemical one is 61. What is the net driving force for sodium? It is the addition of these two forces and it is 131 millivolts for sodium. If you can again remember from the resting membrane potential video, this small force of 10 millivolt for potassium is going to be multiplying its effect through a lot of potassium channels that we have drawn here. However, the big force for sodium is going to multiply its effect with a small number of sodium channels that we have drawn here. What was the condition at the resting membrane potential level? The condition was that the total number of potassium moving out of the cell by a small force through a lot of channels is equal to the total number of sodium coming into the cell by a big force but through a small amount of channels. So the number of potassium coming, going out of the cell was equal to the number of sodium going into the cell. If a positively charged ion moves into the cell, it is going to make the membrane potential less negative or more positive. On the other hand, if a positively charged ion moves out of the cell, it is going to leave the negative charges behind and make the membrane potential more negative. During the resting membrane potential, the number of positively charged ions moving in and out are equal. So the membrane potential does not change and resting membrane potential stays constant. When, but during local potentials, something different is going to happen. When the forces for potassium and sodium are in these conditions, what will happen to the resting membrane potential if more channels for potassium are going to open? Let's assume that some ligand-gated channels for potassium are opening and this is increasing the total number of open channels in our cell. Here, the total number of open channels is going to increase, multiplied by the small force here, and the total number, this is going to increase the total number of potassium ions going out of the cell, whereas the number of sodium channels is going to stay the same, and the total number of sodium going into the cell is going to stay the same. Simply, we can say that the movement of ions in and out are no longer equal. The potassium ions going out of the cell are bigger in number. The result of this is going to be what we call hyperpolarization.
which means inside of the membrane is going to become more negative. Imagine that it is not the potassium channels that open under these conditions. Imagine that some, this time, new channels, ligand-gated channels, for sodium open. This is going to increase the total number of sodium channels, whereas the total number of potassium channels are going to stay the same. Now, when the number of channels for sodium increase, this is going to multiply with the same force and the result will be a bigger number of sodium ions moving into the cell, whereas the channel number for potassium stays constant and so the total number of potassium going out stays constant. What will happen? Then the total number of sodium going into the cell will be bigger than the total number of positive charges brought out of the cell by the potassium ion and this is going to make the membrane potential, we no longer call it a, a resting membrane potential, this is going to make the membrane potential less negative or in other words it is going to depolarize the cell.